It's the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince, with another Diamond Chat with O.P., our baseball guru. We'll be talking about baseball, a sport that has been dear and near to each one of us. How you doing today, my brother? I'm doing good, my man, Mike. You know, it is always exciting to talk baseball. We got a couple weeks under our belt right now, and there's always the early stages in season openings that the pitchers are a little bit ahead of the batters at this part of the season. And we're going to talk a little bit, if we can, about the art and the challenges of hitting. Is that all right? Yes, sir. Let's get it. Yes, sir. Now, we we know that pitchers and catchers show up a little bit before your, your other teams get together, that's just to get their, their reps in, work on any pitches they're trying to develop. And the hitters are also working, but they're hitting off a tee. And we do understand that you can hit off a tee, which is the same as taking a live pitch, but it's not the same as taking a live pitch. I know that sounds confusing, and I'll explain that in a little bit, but there's an art to being able to see the arm motion that comes with the ball, but by the time contact is made, it's just like hitting off a tee. How would you respond to that? Uh, you're absolutely right, Mike. You know, when uh, guys first get back in January, the first thing they want to do is work on their stroke. I call it working on your craft. Um, so, therefore, guys will start hitting off the tee, start a little soft toss. But on the pitching side of it, they're throwing ball pants. They're executing their pitches. So in terms of a hitter, you haven't saw a lot of all motion come toward you. So your time is going to be off a little bit when you first start hitting off live pitching. So usually you start seeing the bats come to life. Oh, April, May, as we're getting close to the conference tournaments and then your regional tournaments. And that's when the thing almost becomes balanced out. The uh, the run productions produce a little bit higher. Home runs produce a little bit higher. And what we call the ropes begin to kind of balance out right there. Because a lot of times, as you say, get guys getting handcuffed, jammed, and whatnot. Unless you're just a phenomenon and you're, you're in a zone all season long. But let's talk about some of the things that helps get that zone to where it seems like everything is moving in slow motion. Well, first of all, you got to be able to track the ball from the pitcher's delivery to home plate. After you can do that a couple of times, you have an idea of what is this fastball doing. What type of fastball is he throwing? Is it a two-seam fastball? Is it a four-seam? Is it a cutter? So after you analyze those things, you're better aware and ready to hit the fastball. Uh, as far as other pitchers, breaking ball specialties, I said it's a crapshoot because, for one, a good breaking ball is never going to be a strike. For two, can you recognize a breaking ball? For three, you got to know pitch counts, pitch sequences. What does a pitcher like to throw in certain counts? So when you add all those things up, you got to kind of simplify hitting as it becomes to being a good hitter. When I play, we were taught that everyone has a strike, and you just have to make sure you don't miss yours. And when I say everyone, the pitcher has a strike, the umpire has a strike, and the hitter has a strike. And you've heard throughout the time when they say, well, that guy just missed his pitch. It might have been one down, right down Central Avenue, and he foul tipped it back, straight back. And chances are, if you got a wise pitcher, you're not going to see that one again, brother. You missed that gift, so we're going to have to try to get you out another way. Well, I look at it like this, Mike. A pitch down the heart that a guy just missed. I don't say he just missed it because guess what? He wasn't prepared to hit it. Now, if you foul a ball to your pull side a long way, yeah, you just missed that one because you were ready to hit that one. So uh, speaking of foul balls and hitting pitches, if a foul ball goes back, you're not ready to hit that pitch. You should foul a ball to your pull side. Yes, sir. That's called getting out in front of it right now. Now, That's right. you you have uh, worked with young men in and out of the professional ranks. How do you teach hitting? Well, first of all, Mike, I've always trained myself to uh, hit through a person, meaning that I don't have one hit philosophy. What I do is I look at you and break you down like film work to a quarterback. I need you to get comfortable in the stand. 
after you get comfortable in the stand, I got to figure out how can we derive at the same time hitting the ball right in front of the plate. So no matter how you hold your hand, how you like to feel comfortable, we're going to break you down mechanically and see what gets you to hit all pitches. Okay. And when you say all pitches, whether it's a wrinkle, fastball, change up, and everything, I still say the hardest pitch to hit is the change up, especially if the arm motion is the same as that of the fastball, because it doesn't matter how hard you're throwing, it's about keeping that timing off for the hitter. Oh, absolutely. If a guy has a good changeup, that guy's going to be a good pitcher for a long time because you're never going to be able to derive which, which one is coming out first. Is it a fastball or changeup? A guy that can absolutely spot and locate the changeup, he's definitely going to be a battler for you all, all the time because in the back of your mind, you're going to see the pitch coming. You've got to recognize it in a split second. Is it the fastball? Is it the changeup? That can cause a, a big problem for a hitter. Yes, sir. Now, a lot of people don't realize that how a guy approaches or stand in the box really letting you know where they prefer the pitches to be thrown. Well, yeah, with the technology they got now, scout reports tell a lot of things about you. Do you have an open stand? Do you have a closed stand? Does he pull off pitches? Does he dive in the box? So with that advanced technology, pitches are smarter, and they're not going to feed you your uh, graded pitch a whole lot. Now, what I always have been fascinated by is there has been technology, and Tony Gwynn was an expert at this. He would video each at bat that he had, and he would go in the tunnel. I know we don't have the luxuries when we're talking about a high school or collegiate athlete, but he would go in the tunnel in between pitches and review his 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 last at bat. Why are we not taking advantage of videoing at bats on the high school or the collegiate level at this time in the 21st century? I think it's uh, a little costly for some schools, but when I was a hitting coach at Louisiana Tech, we did have that technology. So as soon as the game was over, we could go right in and see every at bat, every pitch, and that kind of prepared us for the next day in conference. But um, guys got to be more aware that the best hitting coach is, is you. You're the guy in the box. You're your own hitting coach. So you got to make in-game adjustments. You can't rely on the coach to tell you everything that's going on. So I tell guys, make a note, especially if you see everybody twice in the district. Either he's going to get you or you get him. So the way they go around that is if he got you on fastballs, the next time you face that guy, be prepared for the fastball. Now, if you get him on fastballs, you better make an adjustment and be looking for his off-speed pitches. Well, it's always, as we say, about making adjustments. That's why I love this game of baseball. It's just like the, the, the game of life. You have to make adjustments just because you got a home run, your last at bat don't mean it's going to be guaranteed the next at bat and vice versa. You could have struck out whether it was looking or swinging. You got to get that out of your mind and get ready for the next at bat. But when you are really comfortable at that plate. A true home run hitter is not looking to hit home runs. They're looking to make solid contact each time. How important is that to make solid contact in verse swinging for the fences? Oh, man, that's really important. There was a young guy, um, a young man I like to say, he's in the big leagues right now. Uh, I trained him, had a lot of time working with him. And all I told him was to do was hitting doubles. And I'll never forget, he played at Stephen F. Austin. His name is Hunter Dozier. We were playing in a midweek game. He hit a double, and he became the um, all-time double hitter at Stephen F. But you're absolutely right. If you can hit doubles, that means you're spreading the ball to the field. Sometimes that ball going to keep going for home runs. So I tell everybody, don't try to be a home run hitter because you can only hit so many home runs, but square contact, you should be able to do that at least uh, 30% of the time. All right, we're talking right now with Olin Parker, and we're talking the art of hitting. Brother Parker, you got a young man that's struggling at the plate. What's the advice you're going to give to him right now? First of all, what's your thoughts when you're going up to the plate? It's so easy to get negative when it's not going good. And in terms of if you're going real well, it's so easy to be too high. 
So you got to figure out what's your thought. Negative thoughts, negative results. All right? Second of all, what adjustments are you making for a pitch? If you're looking for a certain pitch and you chose a pitch you're not looking for, why are you swinging at that pitch you're not ready to hit? That's putting you in a hole. A uh, third, always, always teach you how to hit the ball off the field. If you're trying to hit the ball off the field, you're going to see the ball a long time to the plate. So if you go up there with that kind of confidence, um, you got to have the big C first confidence that you're going to get a hit. Are you going to execute? Are you going to drop a bunt? You know, another thing I don't see enough guys don't bunt enough. You got to think you got to swing to get a hit all the time. Hey, if you can drag bunts and get on, that's just as good as a hit now. What they call a slump, which I don't use, if the slump is over, you got to hit. So let's go up there with enough confidence to square them all up now. Well, you know what? You just brought up a very valid and frustrating point for me. The art of bunning has died. I can't say that it's dying. It has died. And especially on the high school and the collegiate level, that has got to be probably the most fundamental deal that a hitter works on is to be able to control that bat to lay down the bunt. And when I say bunt, know the difference between a drag bunt situation and a sacrifice bunt situation. I get so frustrated seeing young men at the plate. They've been given the bunt sign. You got a runner at first and second, and they're trying to bunt for a hit. Sacrifice the thing, give up your body, and move the guys over. That's small ball, but it's also good team ball. Well, Mike, when you have a team player, he's already going to know before he gets up to the plate that he has to sacrifice butt. He's already done it on the sidelines. He knows the situation. Um, I think the loss on the bunting starts with a little league and select. You see a bunch of big kids, and they say, hey, coach, I don't butt. I say, well, if you're playing on my team, you better learn how to butt because everybody's going to butt. So I think it starts with the select ball. Once a kid gets 14 or 15, he's never bunted before. So now he thinks, oh, I'm not a good bunter. No, you've just never been taught or been made to bunt. In terms of bunting, we got to go back to the fundamentals. Everybody in the lineup needs to be able to bunt because you never know what that situation is going to be called upon. You're absolutely right about that because um, sometimes the element of surprise <laughs> uh, can be just as effect- effective as smashing that ball off the wall in the gaps. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. I mean, you see a lot of times a big guy surprise a guy with a bunt. Next thing you know, the field, the field, the ball, throw the ball down the other line. Now you've only you've driven the guy in by a bunt, and also you have second base and scoring position. So, I mean, don't take bunting too lightly, um, especially early part of the year when elements are not so good for hitting. You know, I know a lot of folks, it plays big because, you know, elements are the wintertime going into the spring. So you've got to be able to bunt to uh, execute and get runs driven in. Yes, sir. Now, as Always, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give our brother OP an opportunity to let you know how you can get in contact with him. Maybe you have a young one that needs to brush up on their skills. I don't know, OP. Can you help me get my skills back on track, man? Oh, my God. I don't teach softball, and I know what I'm doing right now. It's going to be on track for softball, so I don't think I'm going to help you with that swing. Well, maybe you can't help me, but you can help the next person that's listening. How can they get in contact with you for your services, my man? I can be reached on my cell at 318-436-9688. Email address olentalker65 at yahoo.com. Man, it's always a joy and a pleasure to talk baseball with you. And I know that um, you love it just as much as I do. We want to thank you for making yourself available for us on this week. He is Olin Parker, a.k.a. O.P., the baseball guru for us here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network and the Mike Prince Show. I am the radio guy, the Dr. Mike Prince. Remember our 24-hour dial-in voice center. It's 713-570-6736. And until the next time, you guys be blessed. We'll see you on the other side.